Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got a very special guest with me. This is my mom, Terry Arbuckle, and she's gonna help demonstrate three rescues that every kayaker needs to know. So the three rescues we wanna talk about today is first the standard T rescue. I'm gonna have mom demonstrate how to rescue me. I'll play the victim first. Then next, I'm gonna rescue mom with a variation of that called a heel hook rescue, where it uses more of your lower body strength to get you back into the kayak. And then lastly, we're gonna do a paddle float rescue, where we use a paddle float on the end of the paddle and use it like an outrigger to self-rescue without the assistance of someone else. So if you kayak long enough, chances are you will end up in the water, or more likely, you're gonna find somebody else that ended up in the water. And this is the number one rescue you need to know to help that person get back into their boat. There I am. Just paddling along, looking at the seagulls. And, wow, dude, look at that! Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. I just, I just was looking at that eagle and I fell out. Oh no! Take your boat over for me. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. All right, get to the back of your boat, being careful of that rudder, though. Okay. All right. I'm gonna pull your boat up on top of my boat. All right. Empty the water out of your boat. <laughs> okay, got like five other paddles. Let me have your paddle, please. You're doing all right? Yeah, I'm doing fine. All right, good. Okay, I want you to jump on the back of your boat, grab my deck line. Okay. okay. So, guys, what I'm thinking here is I want to be as flat as I can on the water. So, when I'm coming up onto the back deck of this kayak, I'm not trying to pull myself up on. This is what I see a lot of people do, is trying to get up on there and their feet are coming up. It just doesn't work. Yeah, so always swim up on the back deck using your feet behind you. So what I'm gonna do now, kick my feet to the surface, and I'm gonna think about swimming up on the back deck and push my kayak underneath me. So much easier that works. Now I want you to face your head towards the back of the, your boat. Okay. Stay as flat as you can, getting your feet in. Okay, scoot back, stay flat. There. Now we don't let go until I know that he's okay. You're all right? Yeah. Doing good. I'm gonna get my spray on. skirt on here. My new level six spray skirt. Thanks, level six. New supporter of the channel. We're really excited about their gear. These skirts that they're making are super rad, super dry. Stoked to have them as a supporter. Cool. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. So as I talk about the skirt, I realize many of you guys might be interested in putting a skirt on your kayak. And it's important thing to know how to get out of your boat, right? Because once you put a skirt on, you don't just pop right out. You are kind of connected to the boat. So first things first is you gotta know where the handle is. You gotta make sure this thing's always pointed out. If it's tucked inside, you have a lot harder time getting out. If I lift it real hard, I might be able to get it to pop, but this particular level six skirt with the reinforced ramp, this thing ain't coming off. So I always wanna have the handle out, check that before I get in. And then when I'm ready to come out of the boat, I capsize, I'm gonna lean forward so that paddle stays in my lap, I'll reach forward to this handle, lean forward, pop the skirt, release the skirt, and then what I'm gonna think about is just sliding the kayak off like a pair of pants. I'm gonna roll forward and just slide the kayak off like a pair of pants. So we should talk about a little background here because you guys have never met my mom. I don't think, well, mom's been on the channel one time. We went canoeing for Mother's Day a few years ago. But mom is also a ACA, what, level three instructor? Three. Level three instructor. Ran Headwaters Adventure Company here in Reading for about a decade before she sold it to our business partner, Brian, who still runs it to today but spent a lot a lot of time teaching kayak classes out here it's literally put thousands of people on the water over the years so it's fun to have you back out and on the channel again it's fun you're out of retirement thank you thank you <laughs> all right let's get you in the water all right here we go there you go <laughs> simple as that now people always worry if they come out of their boat like are they going to come right out I've never had somebody get stuck in a kayak ever. They always come out. It's amazing your need for oxygen really overpowers your uh, your fear of being stuck. Okay, ready? Ready. We're gonna do a T-Rescue. See how I paddle to the nose of the boat. Got my hands in position. 
So the one thing I think about, I'm going to grab onto your back toggle there, is when I'm rescuing somebody, I'm committing my weight to the boat. And that does a couple things. It allows me to move around the boat. See, I can't really capsize because she's like a giant outrigger out here that I can hold on to. So I can really get myself in position, make a nice tee. Keep holding on to that back toggle. I'm going to bring her boat up to me. I use the keel with one hand, the deck line with the other, and I pull the boat upside down. You always hear me preaching about bulkheads, and that's why. It's because with the rear bulkhead, I can do that maneuver, empty all the water out, and now I have a nice dry boat that I can get somebody back into. If they didn't have a rear bulkhead, the back end would just sink down, and basically we're forced to swim to shore. The other important thing is always try and hold on to your paddle. Um, if you can, hold on to that paddle. Okay, I'll take your paddle from you whenever you're ready. All right. The nice thing about sea kites, you have these nice big deck lines you can grab onto for support. So mom's gonna demonstrate a heel hook rescue here. You see how she's sitting nice and flat on the water? So I put the paddle underneath my forearms. Mom's laying on her back here. What she's gonna do is called a heel hook rescue. She's going to take her left leg and stick it underneath the cockpit combing here. Now, I've got all my weight on her boat, so I can't tip over. This is like a giant buoyancy aid. I can lean with all my weight to keep her nice and stable. Mom, whenever you're ready, I want you to go ahead and reach across and grab onto your deck lines. There you go. She uses the leverage from her lower body. It takes a lot less upper body strength. So folks that don't have the same upper body strength, this is a great way to go. And you see how I use the deck lines to support her. She also used the deck lines to get back in. That's one of the reasons I really, really like touring kayaks because typically all touring kayaks will have perimeter deck lines, swim toggles, good places to hold onto the boat, to move myself around the boat. Whereas some of the more basic recreational kayaks don't have this stuff, it makes rescues more challenging. So the third rescue is called a self-rescue. Now this one's a little bit more involved and you need some pieces to your kit. This is what basically a self-rescue kit would look like. This guy here folds up and this is a paddle float. It un unrolls, it fits on the end of my paddle, like so. And then it has these chambers that will inflate so I can then put the paddle behind me and make an outrigger for support. And then once I get back into the kayak, I'm gonna have a lap full of water to deal with. So this is a kayak bilge pump. I can put that in the boat, clear out any excess water. So if you're paddling solo, especially if you're in open water, these are both things that are absolute must for a touring kayaker. So that's always making fun of my nose plugs, but he's never had as many sinus infections as I have either. I spent my whole life in the water and there's something about my nose and when it gets water in it i get sick for like four days so nose plugs for the win if you're going to be spending a lot of time practicing your rescues spend the tent box on a pair of cotton mouse nose plugs i think i got these at nrs.com for like i said 10 15 bucks they're a lifesaver i always just keep them here at my pfd just in case of a capsize <laughs> just kidding All right, so now I've fl flipped over. I'm by myself in the water. Most important thing is to never let go of my paddle or my boat. If I need to like deal with my paddle float or wherever to get it ready, I can leave my kayak upside down. Sometimes I'll stick my leg in the cockpit just to keep it, keep it from moving around so I can have both my hands for doing this paddle float rescue. So let's do that first. Let's get our little outrigger blown up. My legs in the cockpit. Slide it onto my paddle. Clip it in place. And there you go, there's the paddle flip. So next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna keep paddle in my hand. I like to go to the front of my boat and try to lift the front up and empty as much water out of that cockpit as I can. 
having a little extra buoyancy on the paddle float will actually give you something to push off while you're doing that too. And on most touring kayaks, they should have an X pattern bungee on the back. And this is what it's for. You take your paddle, you slide it through like that. And now look, I have this big outrigger that I can relax on, catch my breath, wait for the Coast Guard. Or in my case, I'm just gonna get back in my boat and paddle home. So again, you could do this either way. You could do the heel hook rescue like mom demonstrated, or you could get up on the back deck like I demonstrated. In this case, I'm gonna show you guys a heel hook where I take my left leg, stick it on the cockpit. I like this because you're using your, the power of your leg to get back in the boat. I use that leverage flex, roll up on the back deck, always keeping my weight on the side of the paddle. This is my outrigger, this is my buoyancy. So once I'm in, keep leaning on here. You wouldn't believe how many times people get to this stage and they sit up and flip over that way. Happens all the time. Put my skirt on. Pull my paddle out. And away I go. I can honestly sit here for a minute with this in my hands just to have that extra flotation. If whatever flipped me over is still in the area, like maybe it was a a big set of waves that came through that tipped you over. You can take your time, keep this on, and then when you're ready, unclip, empty the air out, and away you go. Now I know what a lot of you guys are saying. Yeah, that's all good and well in flat water. I can see the comment sections already blowing up with like, that would never work in a real life scenario. Couple things, if you practice here in flat water, calm water, you'd be surprised at what challenging water you can actually do these things in. I've done them in tide races underneath the San Francisco Bridge and the Golden Gate. And yes, it's not easy, but it is very, very doable. Practice definitely makes perfect. And in some cases, you're right. You probably shouldn't be doing this in rough water. You probably shouldn't be paddling solo in rough water where you're gonna need to rely on these things in order to get back in your boat. So just know your limitations, make smart decisions, and practice in flat water. When it's in a nice warm 100 degree day and the water's, you know, 75, you don't have to worry about hypothermia and shock and all the things that come along with being in the water too long. So if you're gonna have a paddle float, it's important to know where it's at. Keep it in the same spot every time so it's second nature. When you need it, you reach for it and you grab it. You see I have it up here on my deck. If I was actually kayaking with it all the time, I actually would keep it in my cockpit next to my seat. I have a little tight spot that it fits sort of out of the way and I know if I need it, I can reach in there and grab it. And after doing that rescue, I have, I don't know, half gallon, gallon of water in my boat. That's where I take my bilge pump. I try to get my cameraman wet. So I think it's important to note that today, both mom and I were using sit inside touring kayaks with full perimeter deck lines, all the tools we need to be successful at doing these rescues. Not every kayak has that. So it's important to practice in the kayak you have and maybe at some point we'll hop out here in some more basic recreational kayaks or kayaks without bulkheads or sit on tops and just show you guys some other tools that would work to help you with your particular rescue scenario. For now, do me a favor and leave that in the comments section. I would love to know what are you paddling, what's your rescue story, and how did it go for you? So shout out to my mom. Give me a thumbs up for mom being on the channel. It's pretty cool to have a, uh, a mom slash grandma that still gets out and shreds with me. So Absolutely. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, Thank you guys. You. Until next time, this is Dan and Terry wishing you happy uh, paddling. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>